It's about damn time. Let me start off by saying I love Jack Black and I love Lizzo. I also love Christopher Lloyd. I love Bryce Dallas Howard. I love The Mandalorian. I freaking love Grogu. But what the fuck? So who talks first? You talk first. I talk first. Okay, okay, okay. I know some people like this episode, and there's nothing wrong with that, but for me, this was a real miss. And I'm kind of going to jump all over the place here because this is not going to be an official, like, a normal one of my reviews where we talk about the whole thing because I just didn't like it that much, so I'm just going to kind of jump around, and I want to start with the very last shot, which was the most cringiest shot to me, and that was when Bo-Katan got the saber from Din and then ignited it. She got it back, and I was like, oh, that's, you know, first of all, why are we just now having this discussion? I mean, you were just retaining this information until she was getting her butt beat in a fight, and then and then after she does the fight, you decide to give it. She could have died. She could have died, and you could have avoided it a long time ago. I guess he just really wanted it for himself and was waiting until the situation called for him to give it up. He's handing the saber to her over. It's a great moment. She takes it. And then I, as it's like zooming in, it's like <laughs> dollying up closer to her face. I kept going, don't ignite it. Don't ignite it. It's too cheesy. Don't do it. Don't do it. And then she ignited it. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> Why did you have to do that? At we've every single end of an episode that Bo-Katan has been featured in prominently, it has ended with a hero shot of her. Have you realized that? It's like, okay, we get it. This this season is about Bo, which is fantastic. Love Bo-Katan. But come on, at this point, it's just formula. It's every episode, it's just a hero shot. Her looking off and past the camera lens with, with, her, with her weapon or her helmet by her side or now the Darksaber. It's just, it's... I've seen it so many times. And then after that, it cut to directed by Bryce Dallas Howard. And I was like, oh, honey. I really like Bryce Dallas Howard's contribution to Star Wars. Her episodes in the Book of Boba Fett was the best thing, the only good thing about the Book of Boba Fett. And she's done really well in The Mandalorian as well. And her also, her directorial debut in Black Mirror was amazing. I would love to see her have a film one day. I think she's more than qualified. But this episode, honey. What are you doing? I struggle to understand what made her want to work on this episode. I, I'm sure it was an assignment and she doesn't get to pick what she works on. But still, it's like you, did, you were doing so well. And it's not all Bryce Dallas Howard's fault, okay? It is really comes down to the writing. This episode was the definition of filler. I mean, it's like we're six episodes in and we just like finally figured out what the point of the show is going to be. It's be reclaiming Mandalore and it took us forever to address the premise of the show now because the old premise, getting Grogu back to his people, was accomplished and also thrown out. And then it was like, oh, the new premise is going to be her reclaiming the Darksaber and finding her people. No, because now she got the Darksaber again, and it was really just through a conversation. Okay, forget the uh, premise and the story. I ranted on that last week. Let's talk about the cameos. This episode was just filled with cameos for really no reason. I mean, we knew that Christopher Lloyd was going to be in it. He was great. He was fantastic. I loved it. It was a little too Scooby-Doo for me at the end, but whatever. And I love Lizzo, and I love Jack Black, but their appearances really felt like a cheap pop, like a gimmick just to keep people talking and watching the show. I mean, I knew Lizzo was also going to be in it because she said some comments last year that made it assume that she was actually going to be in the show. But Jack Black, I had no idea. And don't get me started on people spoiling it for me. I can't stand spoilers. I went on a whole rant diatribe on my social media about it. And I, I, those people, you will burn in hell. I mean, Jack, Jet's Jack Black. How could I not like Jack Black and something? Nacho Libre, School of Rock, Kung Fu Panda, King Kong, Tenacious D. All things that I love to my core but for some reason i think it was partially because it was spoiled that he was in the show for me but i found that when something gets spoiled for me i actually enjoy the show less after watching this episode i was like okay i knew all the cameos were going to be in it so what great story am i going to get out of it and i didn't get anything new added except for the fact that Bo now got the dark saber and finally found the people that her old her old crew that is finally going to join her back again but it's like it's like they're also just doing what the script says i don't really buy it i don't understand what anyone's motive is oh my god and when this episode started off 
with freaking Admiral Akbar's son, who I absolutely hated in the Clone Wars, by the way. Hated this kid. He was always causing chaos. I should have known right from the beginning when there was that whole squid game and Admiral Akbar action going on that this was going to be a bad episode. And there was also something odd about the coloring. I mean, if you look at the difference between Bo-Katan in the previous episode and this one, her hair is much more brighter. It's like they toned this one up a whole lot, almost like they were really trying to disconnect from other worlds. I mean, they even said as much. This world is so different than any other planet in the galaxy. It's like, okay, but why, why are you purposely making it feel less Star Wars-y? It just didn't work. And the battle droids can run now. It's like, what is going on? And then they went down to the freaking morgue to try and get an autopsy on a robot and apparently Bo-Katan and Din Djarin know more about that than the lady whose job it is to do this. It, oh, this episode really frustrated me. It, I actually fell asleep <laughs> halfway through. <laughs> and I woke up and I was like, oh, it's over. What did I miss? And then I played it back and I was like, oh, I didn't miss anything. I didn't miss anything at all. And what's, what's hilarious is I have a friend, Zach. He's been on the show a couple times. <laughs> Whenever I really don't like something of Star Wars, I just know now that Zach's going to love it. It's it's this weird thing we have. It, it, you know, I love that he loves everything. I wish I could, but I, for some reason I just I can't. But this episode looked it, it was like it belonged in the book of Boba Fett. You know, something that I don't ever want to watch again, which is unfortunate. This season, it was doing well, and then it just lost me. To be honest, it lost me a long time ago. I'm still going to watch. I'm still going to do reviews. I'm obviously not as into it as I was last week or the week before. But I don't know. Something's different. You know, it's, I think it's just the, the lack of focus. I don't think the focus is there anymore. I don't know why I'm watching the show. Do you understand? Like, I know they have to go back to Mandalore, but, but what is the tension? What is the, what is the drama? What's the, what's the obstacles? What, what am I rooting for? I don't know what's going on. And Gideon still hasn't come back yet. It's like, did they not sign Giancarlo Esposito's contracts in time? Was he busy shooting something else? Yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of out of it. I don't know what else to say. Again, if you like this episode, that's amazing. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying, I don't know, as some of you would put it, I have bad taste. But it's funny because seeing Lizzo and Jack Black together has kind of fulfilled a fantasy of mine of seeing both of them in, a, in an adaptation of Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> and I really hope that them coming together in this episode leads them to doing some kind of song in the future together. A single would be really nice because they're both extremely talented and that would be a kick-ass song. Okay, well, it's Star Wars Celebration this weekend, so we got some positive things to talk about, and hopefully next week's episode is 10 times better. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Like this video, subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And now, my friends, somehow, someway, somewhere this week, may the Force be with you.